we're not advocating for or against. This is we're just communicating the law, right? And this is we're giving the, our, our best counsel as a result. We, we acknowledge, and we talk all the time about how the there's a sea change where the laws are increasingly being uh, protecting the rights in, in, in uh, of employees and making it harder for employers. So we acknowledge that this is a burden for employers. It is so frequent the case uh, to, to better comply with law and to avoid the risk of lawsuit in, in, in uh, 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 you know, legislative bodies coming in in, in fines for, for not being compliant. Um, almost always the best case is great HR practices further upstream. So if you don't have salary bans, if you don't have job descriptions, and you have Joe is great at this, Sue's great at this, and I pay these people, and, and maybe it's come from the bottom of my heart, and maybe it's worked for me, uh, and I'm not trying to screw over anybody, but now all of a sudden I don't have any of these best HR best practices in place, now all of a sudden I have to comply with this uh, uh, pay transparency law. I might hate it and because it makes it so hard because I'm blowing up my internal. Well, the best way to make that a non-issue is to have these great HR practices in place in the first place. If everybody had job descriptions, if every job had a salary ban, if these things were public knowledge and when you went through your performance reviews, you say, okay, Mary, uh, the, the, the low in high end of this job pays X and Y, and you're sitting right here. Therefore, if you're having these types of HR conversations all along, complying with this law doesn't crush you, right? And, and so right. I would say an acknowledgement, this is gonna be really hard for a lot of especially smaller employers, but yeah. what it's probably gonna do is gonna force everyone's hand to implement the right HR best practices further upstream, which does nothing but create a, a happier, more productive workplace in the first place. It, right, it, and I, I think it makes it, I think it's gonna make it easier to hire. Um, and the fact of the matter is your employees probably already know what yeah. each other makes, right? It's, yeah. it's against the law, it's concerted protected activity for employees to be able to discuss salary. So you can't prohibit them from talking about salary. So they right. are, <laughs> right? right? Um, and that's okay, that's that's the way of the world. And so they probably already know what each other makes. You, you might as well make it equitable and, and it is difficult, um, but we've helped many employers through it who in the beginning are ripping their hair out and going, Mary, I can't do this. And by the end of it, they're like, okay, this makes sense. This I can do, right? And, and yeah. you just gotta get you know your house in order, like I said, it can be done. Um, right. like and I, and I said, like what you, I, you're hundred percent right, but your employees are talking about this anyway, but do you right. want the conversation to happen in the shadows or do you want to happen yeah. in the, in, in, in the light of day where you can help participate in the conversation, right? If I, if, if somebody says, Hey, that person's making X and I'm only making Y that's not fair, but it's happening at the water cooler. There's, there's going to be bad feelings, but if it's part of your performance management process and say, okay, here's the low point for the job, midpoint for the job. Here's you, here's where you're at. Here's where you're at relative to your peers in the range. And here's your job performance. And this is why I'm paying you this. It's like, oh, it, it might be a rough conversation, but there's all the mystery is taken out of it. And when people don't Correct. know the full story, they tend to fill in the blanks with their own version. It's usually worse than the version that you want would have told which is the, the real reasons why. <laughs>